Hey Eurovision fans, the seven songs for UMK Finland's national final have been released. I'm going to listen and react to all seven, talk about which one I think could win, which one I think would be best to go to Eurovision. I'll also give you my personal top seven. We'll look at the odds and we'll also look at the community rankings. So uh, let's kiki. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Tom. I'm an Irish Eurovision analyst and you can find all of this stuff on my Eurovision channel. So if you've been following me this week, I've been releasing videos day by day as all the songs from UMK have been released. So don't worry, I'm going to stitch all those seven videos together. I'm going to edit them down so there's no repetition. And then I'm going to do all my analysis and whatnot at the end. I'll leave timestamps throughout the video for each song. So basically just watch all the ones you haven't seen already. If you haven't seen any of them, then just watch the whole video. And then everything after the seventh video is going to be new content. That's me giving my analysis of the whole national final, what I think, who I think could win, all of that. Okay, so let's go to our first song, which is Sign Kicks singing Dancing with Demons. I'm familiar with Sign Kicks because they were in the contest, I think it was two years ago, they came second. Uh, kind of rocky, electronic feel, really finish. I always expect to get at least one epic rocky song in Finland each year. So very happy to see Sign Kicks back, trying again. The song is called Dancing with Demons. I will definitely have to distort the audio because of copyright, Ooh, copyright. So this is Sign Kicks, Dancing with Demons. Want to know my secret bang? Ooh, dramatic beginning. Rainy floor. Ray Lee on the rainy floor. Ooh. Cool kind of electronic beginning. We're already getting a staging concept as well with this rain and her in the outfit. Ooh. Right into the rockiness. Love it. This feels really well produced. It sounds like a great build up into the chorus. They're great performers as well. Mmm. Okay. It's very good energy. I'm trying to pick out now the melody in the chorus. Wow, that music video looks really expensive. They got like a mechanical octopus arm. I really like this thrashy verse. It's really high energy, really fun. Yeah, she's like fighting with like a robot lizard. The chorus. It's good. I don't think I'm not hearing like a real massive hook like we got with Blind Channel. Ooh, what's she doing with this robot? Like, she's a great performer. Look at the position she's making with her body and she's really getting into it, giving us angles. Ooh, really nice mix up as well. Hmm. Okay, I, had to, I hope they're gonna explode now into the last course. Oh, I like this. This feels kind of like, like a pre, a bridge into the last course. I like it. Yeah, doing some playing around with electronic production as well. Ooh, went into a slow bit. I like it. It's been constructed for Eurovision. Got a lot of energy. It's got a lot of Finnish identity. It's given us that rock energy we love. And she's interacting with the other members as well. It's going to be an exciting stage show. Yeah. And a nice rock outro as well. What happens with the alien in the end? Oh, they just kind of hung out. There was no like resolution of the story. Were they fighting? Were they lovers? I don't know. <laughs> alien, robot, squid lovers. Look really good. I would expect the first song from UMK to be like really solid cool kind of wet my appetite i wouldn't expect them to lead with the best song because that's just how tv shows go they want to like lure you in with something good i associate umk with rock like probably the most out of any country in europe i know that like other countries have big rock scenes as well but finland is the most reliable for having a good quality rock song in their national final so i feel that's really great because it's that first box ticked Sign Kicks, really great performer. She's giving amazing energy. Vocals sound great. She's down on the floor. She's interacting with members. She's just giving like lots of entertainment in how she's performing the song. The song itself, very easy to sit through. I don't have any problems with it. I'm not picking out that hook that I got with Blind Channel where 
I was like, oh, I really want to hear that again immediately. So it's pleasant as, I wouldn't say background music or elevator music, obviously, because it's like a thrashy rock song. There were lots of things I enjoyed, but I'm not rushing to download that because I can't pick out that special melody yet. Still really looking forward to seeing them doing their live show and seeing can they elevate. If this was to win, it's gonna stand out because we get so few of these like heavy rock songs every year. And these guys, this is their brand. This feels very authentic to them. It feels very similar to Hurricane, which was their song they entered before. So they're gonna be comfortable on stage, really rocking out and that's gonna have its niche appeal. So yeah, I think this is a really fun start to the contest. Let's go to our second song. It's Sex Main singing Mania. So I'm not familiar with Sex Main, but I am familiar with his older brother, Isaac Senna, who was in Uyumk, I think two years ago, with his song. I can't remember the word in Finnish, but I remember it meant hot or cold. <laughs> and it was a pretty raunchy, sexy song. I really, really liked it, listened to it a lot. I remember being a tiny bit disappointed with his live performance. I felt it was maybe lacking in this kind of like fiery intensity that I got from the music video, but very intrigued to see that his younger brother brother is entering again this year. So the artist is called Edward Sena, but he goes under the name Sex Main and he's had some pretty good success in Finland. He had a <laughs> album which is called Sex Tape. So Sex Main releasing a sex tape album. So yeah, he's obviously in touch with his sexual side, which is very cool to see. And his genres are pop, rap, trap, and R&B. So very interested to see what we're gonna be getting this year. Will it be second time lucky for the Sene brothers? Is it Sene or Scene or how do I pronounce that? This is Sex Mame, one and I'm a secret band. Whoa! <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I don't know why I thought we were gonna get into something like really sexy slinky. This is a bit more uh, fiery aggressive. Ooh, singing finish, lovely. Finish is so pretty. I love the color scheme in the video so far. Oh, sex there, and then the orange. Oh yeah. Oh, I like that a lot. Great start. Ooh, an orange washing machine. Totally, I wanna buy that. Okay, it's a bit anarchistic in its sound. This is totally different from what I was expecting. Oh. Oh, I really like that mix up. This feels like kind of like angsty. I'm really on board with this. I feel like we're moving all over the place as well. I don't know what to expect next. It looks like he's got a bit of sense of humor as well. He's got a different sense. I can see the connection with Isaac, but then also he's his own individual as well. Ooh, is that a coffin? I love his brand he's made up. This sex with the like white uh, diamonds, yellow diamonds. This is the coolest laundry I've ever seen. Yeah, there's something in this that's like really fighty, really raw. And this bit. Ah, oh, I really enjoy that mix up into kind of a bit more standard pop course. Yeah, really, really great. This feels edgy. It feels like it's got lots of layers to it. And he's given me so much attitude. I love it. Mmm. Right, little mini rock mix up as well. If he's selling this merchandise, I'm, I'm buying it. I really like that. His clothing line. Oh, ad living as well. Thank you. Yeah, lovely. And we're getting lots of rock, big, beautiful solo at the end. Oh, and the angsty scream. Brilliant. Oh, wow. I really, really, really like that. I don't know why I was expecting something. I think it was also because in that Wikipedia article, I think it said R&B. And then also because the before you load an image on, on YouTube, you get like a, the thumbnail. And the thumbnail was that orange color palette. And then also we kind of automatically think of pop when we think of Eurovision national finals. So when he came out absolutely punching at the start, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I need to completely reset all my preconceptions. And then also just the fact he's Isaac's brother as well. I just kind of assumed we're gonna be getting kind of something in the same vein. That was very, very, very different. I really enjoyed that. It kept me on my toes the whole time. I had no idea what was coming next. There were some rap parts, 
then there was like kind of like it wasn't a pop course but it was like kind of a little bit more of a standard melodic course a little bit in the same way that carrier last year had his rap and then he merged into the schlager bit which is like a little bit more accessible to the kind of mainstream music scene and i love the fact it's in finnish finnish is so pretty you know could this be two years in a row now that we have the finnish language i would absolutely love that I don't, it's such a weird thing for me because like finnish to me sounds so magical <laughs> like it probably sounds like a proper proper magical language and to not utilize such a great tool in your entry and also it's just like showing off your culture or showing off your country. I think for a lot of Finnish people, obviously writing in Finnish is gonna be easier. They can write cooler lyrics. They can do more wordplay and whatnot. So, oh my God, I'm really excited <laughs> about that. I can see that winning. That for me, if that went to Eurovision, I'd be very happy with that. It is so rich in its identity. He looks cool. I love the fashion in it. I love the mix up in the song. I love the finish in it. There's just so many things that make this like a really rich, multi-dimensional Eurovision entry. So, and this is only the second song and I've seen nobody talking about this. So I'm guessing that it didn't go down particularly well within the community. I felt like it was breaking rules and I, the angst and the passion that was in it. I hope now that he has just a, a bit more, again, I was felt a little bit of a lack of oomph from Isaac in the live show in UMK. I was kind of thinking that maybe Isaac could have won. His song was really good, but the live performance just didn't really get to the level necessary to win such a high standard competition as UMK. So I'm really hoping that Sex Men can step up to the plate and deliver. Our third song is Sara Sipola singing Pascana. Seven. So our third song is from Sara Sipola. It's another song in Finnish, Pascana which is a naughty word, <laughs> a word that sounds like ship. I'm feeling like we're gonna be getting some sort of maybe ballad because the screenshot I have right now on my screen is her looking very contemplative. But if there's one thing I've learned about UMK is don't make any assumptions because all of a sudden she could turn into a rock chick and start rocking out. But yeah, really, really cool that the song is in Finnish. I'm hoping that Finland are gonna go through this little language renaissance where their song every year is in Finnish, the same kind of way that Albania did from 2017 onwards and they started doing a lot better as well. Two out of our three songs so far have been in Finnish. Baskana from Sara Sipla, one and my secret bang. Okay, yeah, so it does sound more introspective, but electronic as well, which I really like. Oh yeah, English subtitles, so good. Love you, UMK. Ooh, little bit of a slight R&B feel as well. This is a fantastic beginning. Very engaging. The electronic production, the piano, lovely. Finish is so pretty. So pretty. Mmm, bit of like a bop ballad. Mmm, really, really nice. Totally different feel from the first two songs. Turn off the internet, everything is wrong. Can't you see I'm a effing wreck? Ooh, oh, that's a lovely electronic riff. This is angsty, she's really like exposing herself. There's a vulnerability in this and the lyrics. Mmm, she tries to feel with wine and sympathy. This has got fantastic construction, feels Earthy, but still like got that really slick production. She's giving us a lot of emotions as well. Really looking into the camera a lot. Yeah, really, really nice. Very high quality. I'm thinking I can this be a winner. There's some lovely bassy beats coming in there as well. This has got a lot of layering in the production. This is the really magic bit. And she's saying, I'm an effing wreck. I love that. I love that vulnerability. Yes, I'm older now. But if I can't love, then no one should love. Mmm. She's really spitting some truths. Very simple video, but it looks really cool. Giving us that lonely feel, isolation. Yeah, she's really leaving the passion. Lovely build up into the final climax. This is really great. I love that it's like a ballad, but it also has got bop as well. Fantastic, so much energy, so much passion. Oh, ad-libbing as well. Yes, queen. Fantastic, oh, wow. Oh, UMK. 
we're not even halfway through and I've already got I, all three of those songs I would be super proud if I was finished if any of those three songs I know that Sex Main's song apparently didn't go down very well in Finland although he did go to number two in the Spotify streams that was fantastic really really good quality I love this idea of like kind of a boppy ballad where it was like a really intimate song talking about vulnerability and you know all the things that are going on in her head and her worries and anxieties but then at the same time it has this like beat behind it it's like she's still fighting but then she, I love how the lyrics and the beat were kind of like pulling against each other but it worked I didn't feel like the beat was really really like it wasn't like a dun 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 it felt like it had a connection to her because you know as people we have multiple facets to our personality we have a happy side we have a sad side we have, we're different people in different moments of time so I like that that song kind of embodied that that it was various things at once melody wise yeah it was pretty strong I'm not gonna say now that was the most wow melody like RK 2.0 this is gonna win Eurovision but I thought the melody was very very strong and I like the overall kind of vibe rhythm that was going on the kind of energy that I was feeling it felt like the type of song that I'd listen to and it would give me energy while I'm walking down the street so and then the angst in her lyrics the kind of passion the slight torture in how she's feeling giving me that kind of like emotional connection with her as well we had some lovely close-ups of her looking into the camera with some side-ons of her kind of like screaming UMK wow let's go to the fourth song it's Jesse Markin singing glow different artists. Today we have Jesse Markin, who I've been reading up on Finnish Wikipedia, obviously, and he is a Finnish Liberian born rapper. So he was born in Liberia, moved to Finland when he was six, and then he's been living there for the whole rest of his life. He was originally in a hip hop group called the Megaphone State, but he went solo in 2018. And he also participated in Dancing with the Stars, where he finished seventh. So I wonder is that going to factor into his performance? I think the song might be in Finnish. Obviously, the title is in English, Glow. I'm going to turn on the subtitles just in case we do get some Finnish because this year has been very Finnish so far, which I completely and utterly approve of. Hoping that we get another different genre of music because the variety this year in UMK has been really, really super cool. Okay, this is Jesse Mark and Glow while I know my secret band. Oh, excited for this, the quality. Oh, oh yeah, different feel, love it. I love this opening tableau of him just talking to the camera. Oh, yeah, he can dance. Oh, this is so different. By that, production is kind of chaotic and kind of wild. Ooh, so much attitude in this. Yeah, he's gonna be doing the dancing. That's really cool. This feels like such a different vibe from the previous three songs. Oh, he's got an alpaca as well. Ooh, that's kind of light, isn't it? It's like very chill, kind of like summer holidays. And that image of the hummingbird, I like that imagery there. Ooh, double chorus, beautiful. Yeah, there's something uplifting about it. And there's like a modernity in this production as well. It feels very cool. The verses are really interesting. That heavy kind of electronic thumpy beat. Yeah, just, just, this feels fresh. I can't think of anything else that sounds like this. I wonder if he's gonna do rap and finish later on. So far we're all in English so far. Okay, this bridge is nice. Ooh. I like the choreo as well. The choreo feels really different. It's not the type of like standard pop hitting marks choreo. And his choice of images as well. We have the horses now and the hummingbird. I think he's getting on stage with five dancers. I love the alpaca. It's so random. Yeah, so feel good. Really great energy, positivity. He's just doing things that we just don't normally hear. This is really original. Yeah, really rough. So interesting. Mm. What are you okay? So it feels really tight as well. All these different songs. 
To me, having a very like Eurovision focused mind, that sounds so fresh and original. And I'm not saying that he totally invented all those sounds and the way all those sounds were mixed together and the feel of the whole thing. But to me, that's just not the type of thing I normally listen to or the type of thing I normally hear. So for me, that sounds very fresh and original. Kind of like a very interesting risk because, funny enough, actually the thing that's kind of closest to that it reminds me of was Benny Cristo Kamama. Had a couple of those sounds, I think kind of the like bassy rhythms and the production in the background reminded me a little bit of Benny Cristo. But I've also thought Benny kind of like brought a very different viewpoint with Kamama. Very easy to sit through. I'd happily sit through it again. Download wise, I don't know. I actually enjoyed his rapping in the verses and the verse production as well was kind of interesting. I spoke in my Your Song video about how I felt Jay Yellow, when he was rapping, it was fine, but I didn't feel like there was much going on behind him and it was kind of just dragged a little bit. Whereas this, I feel like he was giving us more, there was more instrumentation, there were more melody rhythms going on while he was doing the rap. And I thought his rap was just a little bit more enjoyable as well. Also, we had the dancers behind him doing some like slightly Afghan hip hop inspired choreography, which is re again, really super cool. Not something that we've seen before. He's like pulling on his African and his Finnish roots together. Really nice fusion. Yeah, that's the type of thing that catches people's attention when they're watching Eurovision. They want to see these like new things that are intriguing, interesting. It looks like he's going to be able to dance really well. It's not a hard song to sing, so we're going to be pretty confident that what we see on the stage is going to be what was in the music video because he just needs to bring the physical energy, the connection with the camera. I like some of the imagery as well that we had like a hummingbird, an alpaca, the horses. The fifth song is Windows 95 Man singing No Rules. In the meantime, let's check out song number five, which is my most anticipated song this year because it's by Windows 95 Man, which is obviously a pretty evocative name. I'm not expecting a heartfelt ballad from this song. I'm expecting wackiness, funniness, silliness, all that kind of stuff. If you are of a newer generation, you may not remember, but Windows 95 used to be like the operating platform when you had a PC. It's how you used to navigate around very, very slowly and do dial-up modems. Windows 95 is a lot of nostalgia for me, so I'm very curious to see what it's going to be doing. And then obviously the title, No Rules, implies that we might get a little bit of chaos, we might get a little bit of anarchy. I'm presuming the song is going to be in English as well. So the artist is called Timu Case 3 and they are a visual artist predominantly. I'm going by the Finnish Wikipedia page so it may not have translated perfectly but I understand that he DJs under Windows 95 man but he also has another character called Ukeli. So yeah something a little bit different not our kind of typical artist that we usually get. This person is going to be focused a little bit more on the visuals than others I hope and expect. This is the one I've been waiting for the most. So let's see if my expectations can be met. Windows 95 man, no rules, wanna know my secret bank? Oh, right into it. Oh, hi Windows 95 man. Well, isn't no rules technically a rule? <laughs> oh my God. That's a beat, bitch. Who's the guy in the red? Is that him in a different costume? Ooh. Yeah. It's got some good construction there. We got a beat already. And the music video is very fun. This is like, this is so trashy, but it's so me as well. Like, I know I'm gonna download this. Yeah. It's got like a superhero 90s feel. Eagle, yes. Okay. It's, it's very fun and entertaining and lively so far. And they're giving us amazing, like, cool tableaus. The vibe is very, like, 90s feel. 95. <laughs> We're getting a little bit of rock vocals there as well. I love that the energy and the tempo is really fun. Oh, wow. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> okay, there's two of them, unless I'm hallucinating. That eagle noise is so Malta. Yes. So many ideas, we've got a dance already. I'm picking it up on learning it. Don't get why he's in prison. Oh, because he broke the rules? Cooling it down into a breakdown, amazing. Great construction for the song. Oh, there's the eagle that we heard earlier. I think he was doing the splits on the eagle. 
It's so unserious, and I love it. Come on, Windows 95. Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm picking up all these dance moves, baby. That's a great key change. I love his red vinyl costume, by the way. Yes. Oh, so good. This is a great proper pop climax. Oh, we're going elbow farts. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Look, you you know me. You knew I was gonna like that. <laughs> you knew it. You knew that's right up my alley. Because first of all, I love humor in music. I do listen to a lot of humor artists. But then on top of that, I actually just really enjoy that type of song. Really fun, really high tempo, getting you like happy. You saw how much I was smiling when I was looking at that. Just really joyful. I know there's people who look at these type of entries and they instantly dismiss them as joke entries. There is a place for humor in music, 100%. Lonely Island is one. You really need to check them out. They're so brilliant. They do great music with humor. This for me is great music with humor. For me, that's the song and all the things that's going on. This him doing the contortions and the prison the taking the piss out of themselves with the green screen flying around with eagles doing the cross trainer through the desert and through the mountains windows 95 man the character just so much fun oh this would be absolute super televote at eurovision people would love this fun joy happiness is a good emotion it's a shame that humor songs get dismissed like humor is not a valid emotion or feeling to have and it shouldn't be in music it can be in music why shouldn't it be love sadness depression happiness success they're all talked about in music and no one bats an eyelid but for some reason humor shouldn't be in music or it's looked down on for some reason i don't know showing off that Finnish sense of humor that we got a sense of last year with Portion Boys and also with Garia. And also before that, keep in mind we had uh, I Love You, the computer game song. I can't remember the name. But yeah, them as well, because I know everyone's going to be saying, oh, this is Carrie's fault that we're getting this song, this funny song. I actually thought the Portion Boys were much more humor last year. They bought like big ass, you know, Kimi Raikkonen is from Finland and these are all the things about Finnish people. So this feels more like the successor to that rather than copying off Karia. I have to admit, I missed quite a lot of the lyrics. It was no rules. I don't think the lyrics are going to give anybody some sort of like massive epiphany. I don't think anyone is going to become a monk and move to Nepal. But the sixth song is Sini Sabotage singing Ku Ore Mua. So our sixth song is by Sini Sabotage. So Sini Sabotage is Sini Maria Makkanen. And apparently, according to Wikipedia, she's a rapper, although I've had several instances this season where Wikipedia has told me that people are rappers and they aren't. So we'll wait and see if she is gonna rap or not. And she had a number one single in Finland in 2013. Le Visketrepe. Le Visketrepe. And the song is called Kori Mua, which means Peel me. <laughs> so that's definitely an interesting title. And that might explain why I was seeing so many onions on Twitter last night. But I was seeing lots of people posting pictures of onions. So maybe they're talking about peeling onions. But I would think that people would think more about peeling bananas. Anyway, we're going to find out. I've got the subtitles turned on. Do not worry because I, I think and hope that she is singing in Finnish. So this is Gori Mua, one and on my secret fan. Ooh, a nice like jazzy beginning. She's got a fantastic outfit on as well. I love this little line. Very Betsy, Betty Bop. Ooh. Oh, totally different feel. Peel me, peel me. Every talking day. Oh, this is really fun visuals. Very colorful, vibrant. Oh, I'm dressed up in everyone's opinion. Really cool attitude. Love the dancers. Love this weird, trippy Alice in Wonderland room. Oh, open up my onion. Okay, that's why they're onions. <laughs> yes, I love the mix of English and Finnish. Brilliant. Peel me like an onion. Okay, that's why I saw the onions. It's just super camp. On that golden swan, absolutely amazing. This attitude, I love this kind of like R&B feel, super different. And this production, kind of minimalist, electronic, fabulous. And she's actually rapping, amazing. <laughs> Wikipedia was right. Yeah, I love her rapping style as well. This really like very fast paced trickly rip rap, really cool. And then going into like the more singy bridge and chorus, love it. I know a lot of people are really gonna like this. It's got a lot of personality, a lot of vibes. Undress me, grab me by the hips, peel me like an onion, 
Get ready for them tears. Yes, queen. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> She's not holding back. Feel me like an onion. I got layers. Oh, yeah. Really, this is so fun. Is this the funnest song? Uh, her, I suppose Windows Man is fun as well. Into a piano bridge. Lovely. Bringing in that extra musicality. Really, really cool construction. She's thinking everybody. And going back to that jazzy part of the beginning. Yeah, lovely. Into that last really sultry, sexy beat. I really feel the sensuality and sexuality in the song. She's playful. She's whimsical. She's kind of naughty. She's got a sense of humor. Visual, it's total visual overload, which I really like. Mm. Brilliant ending. I just love it. I love seeing that it's kind of like vivacity in her face. Really, really awesome. I don't know why I was expecting like a kind of girly bop. I think it was because of the outfit. She had on that kind of like blue, kind of like a leotard. Anyway, that just gave me pop vibes. So I thought we were gonna get like a on the dance floor bop. But in the end, it was like this kind of like very sexy, sultry. I don't even know what genre of music that is. I suppose it is kind of pop, but it's more kind of like slightly R&B infused, mellower, cooler pop with some electronic riffs in it. Sounds super fresh and different. Not only does it stand out amongst those six, but it just stands out in general because it just sounds different from Eurovision songs and national finals overalls. A little bit reminded me of Chains On You from Armenia, Athena Manukian from 2020 which also had that kind of like cool sexy sultry vibe this probably a little has a little bit more r&b feel and obviously we've got the wrapping and finish as well which i absolutely love <laughs> she wants to be unpeeled and pelt like an onion that's weird i don't think onion is the first thing that we think of in when we talk about peeling we usually think about bananas in english but maybe in finish the thing that you peel is an onion or maybe she's focusing more on the layers the layers of her clothes being removed uh, so yeah an onion would be a better metaphor for that than a banana her playfulness, her kind of winking, smiling, coyness of the camera, the overtop campness of the visuals rocking on this big golden swan. She had four dancers as well, I think. One of them was possibly male, so I like that cool feeling like this kind of inclusion as well. Yeah, I want some action <laughs> to start unpeeling me. I like that, I think it's fun. I especially like it coming from a strong woman. I think it's a really cool empowerment message of kind of being uh, in control of her sexuality. You know, it's up to her if she can bring the visual package, but I'm really getting the vibe that this it could be a potential winner. It's so interesting to watch. Uh, plus it's in finish, she's got the wrapping, she's getting up and close to the camera. This is the type of thing people are gonna talk about and it's gonna get people stirring, maybe cause a little bit of controversy and sometimes that can be really, really good to get a little bit of a buzz about your song. And the last song is Mikhail Gabriel and New Blue singing Vox Populi. Okay, so this artist is called Michael Gabriel. I looked up his Wikipedia and he's got one in English and in Finnish, which is a sign that he's a bit of a big shot. And he's had quite a lot of success recently with his albums. His last four albums have been top five in the Finnish charts, second, first, fifth, and second. And he's had a lot, a lot, a lot of top 10 singles as well. So I think that this is probably, I'm guessing, w one of, if not the most established artists that we're getting this year. And then New Blue is an Estonian rapper. Okay, so Vox Populi is Latin, it means voice of the people. I have heard that this is a song that is about cancel culture, which is a super controversial topic. So it's gonna, we're gonna have to wait and see what perspective he's taking on the whole thing. And of course, I'm gonna put the subtitles on, so hopefully I can pick out all the things that he's saying. This seems like it's the most expensive looking music video. This opening thumbnail that I can see is in space. So let's see what we're getting. Okay, this is Michael Gabriel and New Blue Vox Populi, one and on my secret bank. Okay, so starting off on space, getting sucked into a supernova. So there's another rap song. Okay, a lot of rap this year. Uh, I am watching the lyrics now. He's talking quite fast, so it's hard to pick up everything he's saying. Sending greetings to those trying to limit my voice. Okay. Fox Populate, all opinions are equally wrong. Uh, I don't know if I agree with that. If you're lions, why do you keep bleating? Okay, if this really depends what perspective he's taking. Um, is he fighting for the oppressed or is he fighting for the privileged? I don't know. I don't know his background. Um, it definitely seems like he's complaining about 
not being able to say what he wants. That seems to be the theme of the song. Musically, I think the song is it's fine so far. Um, I like both their rapping styles, very competent rappers. In terms of like the melody and whatnot, um, there's no massive melody hook that jumps out to me. It's, it seems fine, yeah, it's got enough of a melody in it. And it's got that kind of like heavy, slightly industrial sounding beat to it. The music video looks expensive. This is the most, like the most extras, the most sets, the most like tableau. So I think he's got the biggest amount of money. I'm not sure what this thing is of like, it's like a TED talk. I don't know what's going on there. Okay, so a bit of a mix up now going into like a slightly Gregorian chant with this Latin. Yeah, the, the perspective of this is really important. Is he fighting for anyone who's oppressed or is he bemoaning the fact he doesn't get to say whatever he wants, with, no matter how offensive it is? Why does your pack keep bleeding? There's some translation issues here possibly as well. Coming into quite a powerful ending. And you know, I imagine there's gonna be a lot of energy in jumping on the stage. That is a different one, and then zooming out, coming back to the supernova at the end. That's a really, really, really tough one to view because I believe that he's quite a controversial person. It's a little bit of a touchy subject for me because I don't know this guy's background. I don't know what he did in, or said in the past. Musically, I thought it was fine. Um, I thought the rapping sounded good. The melody sounded fine. It wasn't anything particularly wow. I liked the bit where they went into the Gregorian chant, the bridge before the final chords, and then it had a big impactful ending. It looked there was a lot of money in the video. It looks like he's got the biggest fan base potentially as well. So is this gonna go in being a favorite? Okay, now we've listened to all seven songs. Let me give you my thoughts about UMK. So there's been quite a lot of people talking about UMK online. Some people are disappointed. Some people are quite excited. I'm more in the excited camp. I actually thought that this year was really, really strong. I love the diversity. Some songs in Finnish, some songs in English, some in Finnish and English, a little bit of Latin as well. It's a really, really cool variety. I definitely feel like the theme this year was more rap. We had rapping in four of the songs, which is quite a lot. Last year, I feel was very pop orientated. And I think that's maybe why some people are feeling a little bit disappointed because obviously a lot of your fans enjoy pop music a lot more and so maybe this kind of switch over to a different focus has not been as enjoyable for them and that's possibly just the effect of Garia so obviously in previous UMKs anyone who's involved in the pop scene in Finland has known about UMK and could enter whereas Garia winning and doing so well has kind of opened the floodgates for anyone who was a rap artist who maybe thought that they couldn't do well there. So that might be why we're getting so many more rap artists in this edition. It might just also be the songs. I think maybe some people after Cha 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 last year were kind of like very hopeful, expectant of another amazing song. I feel like this year there's a lot of really good quality, lots of sevens and eights out of tens for many people, but there's no 10 out of 10 songs. So maybe it's that lack of a 10 out of 10 that's also making people feel, okay, this UMK, compared to last year wasn't as good. Realistically, UMK last year was probably the best national final of the entire year, or arguably one of the best. So, you know, that's a quite a high thing to compare to. My advice in general is always have lower expectations for a national final and you're gonna be less disappointed. But yeah, I love the variety in the artists, in the sounds, in the visuals. I feel like they've all got different color palettes, different visual packages. I think that we've covered lots of themes as well from Sex Main talking about his neurodivergency and Sankicks also kind of dancing with their, dealing with their own problematic thoughts in their head. Michael Gabriel talking about cancel culture, Jessen Markin with just kind of like a feel good, be your best self. Cindy Sabotage giving us a very like confident self-empowerment song, Windows No Man, just something totally random, and then Sarah Sipola giving us a very heartfelt, vulnerable song. So lots of different thematic things going on. I find it really easy to remember each person, as opposed to some national finals where there's just a lot of beige or there's a lot of people who all kind of blend into one. I feel like everyone had a really strong identity, color palette, sound, personality. I got a lot of personality through the UMK releases. I think UMK do an amazing job of packaging and selling the songs. They give each artist a moment to shine. There's no leaks. 
everything's really well done. They all get given the same budget to do a music video, which I think is a really cool idea. But ju I just felt a lot of excitement reviewing all these songs and I felt a lot of music quality. I've got four downloads from the seven songs, but context is important. And if you remember in 2019, Darude had three songs in UMK and they were all pretty awful. And he ended up coming last in Eurovision. And now five years later, people are kind of disappointed that they aren't hearing a Eurovision winner. I really think that sums up how much UMK has improved that they've gone from last place to people expecting to hear winners. <laughs> I don't think anyone, for example, tunes into Eurosong Ireland and expects to hear a winner. They're hoping for something that could qualify. So the fact that people's expectations for UMK are so high is a testament to its success and its total transformation over the last five years. Thank you to DJ or Kadea. Tapio Hakkinen and his team. For example, Young K has English subtitles. The show has English subtitles. They are super inclusive in getting the entire international community. And that's a big team thing that's gone on. And I think that broadens the international appeal. And that's appealing for the artists because they're not just appealing to the Finnish market. They're also appealing to a larger international market as well. So Young K have made so many clever marketing decisions to make everyone look the best, to make the national final look super cool. And that's why it's growing in quality. So that was my overview of the final. Now I'm gonna give you my top seven. I gotta say there was nothing I absolutely like thought was awful this year at all. I think even my seventh place song probably would be like a five or six out of 10, which I think is actually a pretty good rating. In the end, my seventh place is Michael Gabriel and New Blue. Now, I know there's a little bit of controversy about that, completely ignore that, put it all to the side. If we just go by the song, it's still my seventh favorite song. Um, I still like it, I might end up downloading it, but at this point in time, it's just the one I connect with the least. I still think it's good, like I like the industrial beat, I like the Gregorian chant, I think they're both pretty good rappers, but just the melody for me is just not enough. And also when the fact it's in such a, what I consider a very interesting and strong national final, not having a strong melody is enough to put it into last place. It's seventh of seven, but I still think this is a good song. My sixth place is Jesse Markin. Now I really enjoy this super cool summary vibe. He's definitely got a different feel from everyone else. I think I'd have this higher if he had a little bit of rapping in Finnish. Now some of the Finnish people in the comments section explained to me that he doesn't normally sing in Finnish. He's lived in Finland since he was six years old, so he's obviously fluent, but he usually releases his music in English and suddenly switching to Finnish just for UMK. I think I think people would accuse him of doing a gimmick. Maybe even just like a small verse in Finnish, that would have really elevated it for me. Lyrically, not as strong as some of the other ones in terms of like evoking a strong emotion or making me think about something. My number five is Cyan Kicks. Now, I know this is gonna be a little bit controversial because I think this is one of the most popular ones. I love the sound, I love the feel, Melod the melody just isn't there for me. And I downloaded this and I listened to it like twice and I felt like I was kind of done with it. I just couldn't pick out that thing that gets in my head that makes me want to listen to it over and over again. I'm definitely looking forward to a live performance because when they sang Hurricane a couple of years ago, they super elevated. I thought it was so intense and amazing. Beautiful visuals and they ended up coming second. So I'm expecting this to be elevated live. So I'm not closing myself to it at all. I'm totally leaving my doors open, but I can hear a stronger melody as I could with Hurricane. That's just me. Fourth place, I've got Sex Main Mania. I really, really enjoy the song. I have downloaded this. I'm still listening to it. I love the angsty feel of it. I love there's a little bit of rock. There's a bit of rap in it. It just sounds like something very new to me. Not that he's reinventing the wheel, but this just isn't the type of thing I normally listen to. And I love how he's made a different genre of music accessible to me. I enjoyed the visuals and the music video. I'm just curious what he's gonna bring. I just think this is a very interesting entry. He's used a lot of auto-tune, so I'm gonna to have to see how is he gonna convert this to the stage. My third place is Windows Man 95. I love this, so fun. Great 90s nostalgia, beautiful energy, the visuals, the fun, the humor. This makes me laugh and smile. I'm listening to this on its own. So even when I don't have the visuals, I'm still able to enjoy the song because it just makes you feel happy and light and it's like switch your brain off for 15 seconds. Really excited to see what they're gonna bring into the live show. Yeah, I think this is super enjoyable. So I've only got two places left and as you can probably guess, they're both ladies. So this is very much girl power national final for me. My second place is Sydney Sabotage singing Kuori Mua. Not Kori Mua, that means something very different. Kuori Mua. <laughs> Hopefully I'm saying it right today. I said it wrong in my initial video. I love this so much. It's got so much attitude and badassery. That's a new word. I love the visuals. I love the little line. I love her 
outfit, the sumptuousness, the playfulness in this. She's also got a serious message as well. She's talking about the layers of her personality, but then there's also a more superficial message about a more sexual, like getting undressed metaphor as well. I love that play between the fun side and the more serious under meaning. I love her rapping. I love that it's in Finnish. I love her attitude and her smile and her cheekiness. This is really rich in culture. I feel there's so many different interesting fascinating things go on. It's showing me a new side of Finnish culture. I really, really enjoy this entry. And my first place is Sara Sipala. Is it Sipala or Sipala? I'm not sure. With her song Baskana. Beautiful song. Absolutely gorgeous. I love this kind of more upbeat, boppy ballad. Beautiful vulnerability. She's saying, I'm an effing wreck. I love that realness. Just like, look, this is me. I can feel the honesty in what she's written and what she's presented. I feel this is so heartfelt. It's something different for Finland. We haven't had a lady represent them since Sara Alto in 2018. We had a female guitarist for the Rasmus, but in terms of lead singer, Sara Alto was the last one. It's just a really enjoyable, well-written song. And then having the extra meaning underlying that just makes it even cooler. It's just a cherry on the cake. Okay, now let's go check out the odds. And while we're talking about the odds, I'm also gonna tell you about who I think will win and who I want to win. So keep in mind, these odds are our moment in time. By the time you check it and this video is up, they may have changed. First place, we've got Sara Sipala with Paskana. Second place, Cyan Kicks. Third place, Michael Gabriel and New Blue. Fourth place, Windows 95 Man. Fifth, Sydney Sabotage. Sex Main in sixth. And Jesse Markin in seventh. At this point in time, the bookies are saying that Sarah will win. I would absolutely love that. I think this is such a brilliant follow-up to Cha 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 because it's such a contrast. First of all, we have a male rapper singing like a getting drunk party, not a party song, but you know, an upbeat rap metal bop going into like a total 180 into a female artist, up-tempo, vulnerable ballad, totally heartfelt. The contrast is just fascinating. It just shows off the diversity in Finland that people maybe might be tuning in and say, oh, what are Finland gonna send this year? Are they gonna send something wild and crazy again? And then they see this like super elegant, beautiful, amazing ballad bop. I think people would be really shocked. It'd be, it, it, I think it just shows off Finland in a really, really positive way. So I would absolutely love that. Sign Kicks in second. I would be very happy if they went, although this is not my favorite song. I still think they're brilliant representatives, very high quality. I do feel like it's kind of similar to what Finland have sent in recent years, you know, with Gary and then with Blind Channel as well and the Rasmus. It's kind of like three rocky songs in a row and then sending Sign Kicks. Honestly, of those four, Sign Kicks would be the weakest for me in terms of a song. Like I prefer Jezebel over Dancing with Demons. I know some people won't, but that's what, I, what I'm liking. It doesn't really scream growth for me for Finland, whereas Sarah does. Very happy for them if they win. I think if they do win, it's because they've killed it on stage. So I think it will have been well earned. Third place, we have Mikael Gabriel. Lots of people telling me that he can't win because he's a controversial person. His last four albums have all gone top five in this Finnish chart. So if his fans turn up for him, maybe, but uh, I wonder what the, are the jury's gonna punish this? I can't find any information right now about what is the jury televote split, but in the past, it has been 25% jury, 75% televote, and the televote has been percentage-wise, so it's not converted into points. It's if you get 50% of the televote, you get 50% of the televote points. There's definitely potential there that if Michael Gabriel's fans all turn out en masse, that can just cancel out any jury stuff that happens. Windows 95, man, and fourth, I think it's gonna have to be a very interesting, fun stage show that could elevate. Cindy Sabotage, a little sad to see her down in fifth. I hope that she really brings the same sass and attitude from the music video and then goes up. And then Sex Main and Jesse down at the bottom. Who do I think will win? There's a, there's a couple of ifs attached. You know, if Michael Gabriel's fans will turn out, definitely a contender. Sign Kicks, find it a little bit hard to imagine them winning right now. I think it does take that incredible stage show. I don't think the song is strong enough, so I'd be a little bit surprised. Again, pleasantly surprised. Sarah, I think, is probably the most obvious winner for me. My reaction video to this has the most views. I think this has is doing really well in the charts. I think she's second to Michael Gabriel, although Michael Gabriel's song just came out. So she's been doing very well in the charts as well. I think the reaction to this has been really, really super positive and she really wants it. She's been doing lots of media work. I think if this gets a lot of momentum from people realizing that, you know, a woman hasn't gone since 2008 and this is a very different feel from the last four or five entries, I think that that's gonna help it a lot as well. You know, if, if a female ballad had gone last year, this probably might not seem as special, but based on what it's, what it's following, it does really stand out and feel super special for UMK. 
So that's who my money would be on now. That makes the most sense. Obviously, we have to wait and see rehearsals and then what happens on the live show. My guess right now would be Sarah or Michael. And finally, let's have a look at the community rankings. In last place, we have Michael Gabriel. A couple hundred points ahead of him, we have Jesse Markin. A couple hundred points ahead of him, we have Sexmain in fifth. Fourth, we've got Windows Man, who's also a couple hundred points. So these people are all very close, all these guys very close together. We have three lead female singers taking on the three top spots in the Eurovision scoreboard. If you saw my Eurovision scoreboard video last year, you will know that this is a very normal thing. Us in the Eurovision community, we tend to favorite the ladies a little bit more, whereas the general public tends to favorite the male artists proportionally more than we do. So that's something that needs to be factored in as well. But yes, Cine in third, Sarasip in second, and Sign Kicks in first. This right now, there's only 150 points between Sign Kicks and Sarah. So that definitely has probably been changing and you know, it could change. And when we see the lives, I'm expecting this to jump all over the place. Largely a lot of agreement that I think the biggest difference is Sign Kicks is first and I had it fifth. Actually, if you move Sign Kicks from first down to fifth, then our lists are the exact same. Okay, so I'm feeling the vibe, we're vibing. I'm vibing with the community, that's good. So that's it for today. Thank you to Amy. Avner Khan and Anonymous for supporting me on Buy Me Coffee and also to Linder Jan for supporting me on PayPal. If you want to support the channel, I'll leave links for you in the description. But as always, thank you so much just for watching and maybe leaving a like or sharing the video. And of course, a big shout out to all my patrons all over the world. Thank you for patronizing me. On my Patreon, you can see the original version of the audio for reaction videos. You can join our My Eurovision School World group and you can get updates and a couple of bonus videos as well. So go check that out if you want. Thanks so much for watching. I've seen another year. this video very soon. Goodbye. Blah, 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 blah.